Today we dedicate our museum stories to the work of one of the outstanding Kazakhstani painters, Abdrashid Siddikhanov, an artist whose creative path began in the 1960s. The artists of the 60s are an amazing generation, and Siddikhanov was a master whose talent shined in Kazakhstani cinema while he took active part in creation of many films during 1970s. Later, he became the founder of symbolical painting. Today, we'll talk about the main stages of his creative activity. After graduating from the Almaty Art School, Abdrashid Sidihanov joined the Kazakh Film Studio. It is interesting that his first job was in film industry. Tell us about this exciting experience, the initiation on his professional path and self-realization. Sometimes people don't have particular goals. He didn't really plan to be a part of film industry. It just happened. He graduated from the art school. He was a painter. When he graduated from the Nikolai Gogol Art School, he married my mother and she got pregnant. After graduating, he was given a referral to the St. Petersburg Academy, but he didn't go because of the situation. He also didn't want to be an academic artist. This is the rebellious spirit of the 60s. Yes, the movement against academism has already begun. And the family situation also had an effect. He needed the money. And so he got a job at the film studio, started out as a costume designer. Then he worked as a production designer. Of course, he always said that film industry gave him a lot. You see the effects of light and color as a cameraman, he said. He read a lot because the scripts were based on famous works of our writers and poets, like Kulager in 1971, or Beauty in Morning, one of my favorite films. He had been working in the cinema for a long time. He worked on a film that was based on the famous story by Muhtar Awezov, directed by Yermek Shinarbayev, starring Nurmuhan Janturin and Natalia Rinbasarova. Great cast. Indeed. He also continued painting. In 1965, he graduated from the art school and joined the film studio. And in 1966, he participated in an exhibition of young artists of Kazakhstan. Abdrashid Sidehanov is definitely the representative of the artists' generation of the 60s. The 60s are a common notion today. What was the atmosphere of that time? How did the spirit of that period influence Sidehanov's work? Вот какова была атмосфера того времени и как дух этого времени повлиял на творчество Садыханова? Молодые художники такие уже. Young artists are a special generation in the history of arts of Kazakhstan. They didn't want to follow someone's steps. They wanted to find their own language of expression. Create their own national school, not duplicating existing schemes like, for instance, painting three batyrs based on the example of three bogatyrs. They wanted not only to change the content, but also the form. The question was, where do they get their references? The search led them to the folk traditions, and so they turned to national applied arts and crafts. This is where this carpet perspective came from. We come across these local colors in ethnic carpets, tekemets, sirmaks, embroidered to skis. Monumentality comes from the steppe. 
The carpet perspective is found in almost all artists' works of that time. By the way, in the early 70s, in 1972, if I'm not mistaken, Abdrashid Sudihanov created a composition called The Ninth Micro District, where you, a very little girl, are one of the main characters. Tell us about it. The main character was my mother. Sure. Tell us about this work, about feelings of childhood and what kind of father he was. He was a wonderful father. I understood from childhood that my dad is an artist and he differs from other people. He dressed differently, loved unusual hats, wore different kinds of skull caps. Our mom in Libaeva sold chapans for him. He could buy a hat, cut out the brim and decorate it. When my mother told him, we are going out, put on a suit, he replied, why are you trying to make me look like a government official? I am an artist. His rebellious spirit manifested itself in everything. This is natural for artists. Communication in such environment probably stimulated the 60s. A lot was born in conversations, in live communication, in disputes. Let me just point out that every artist is independent, but at that time they wanted to create something united, a national school, so they communicated a lot, like a craft union. Firstly, there was an artist's studio where everything was always bustling, they visited each other, celebrated together. It was very touching. Now this can happen in museums, but back then it was everywhere. I remember from childhood you enter the artist's studios and the smell of paint hits you in the face. There are unusual creative people like my dad. Later, when I came to the museum, I began to understand him more as an artist. And I wrote my thesis paper about his work, of course. It is very challenging to write about contemporary artists. This wonderful album was created for the 70th birthday of your father. As far as I understood, this beautiful book is your work. Prominent art critics were invited to write the articles. I hope they will continue writing about his art and about him as a person. I think he'll be remembered for a long time. To me, it seems like his life can be divided in two periods. The first having a rough childhood, then entering and graduating from the art school, marrying my mother. It seems to me that these two events, when he officially became an artist and found his life companion with whom he lived for 47 years, this is the point that divided his life in two periods. This was a turning point after which he changed completely. I asked him, how did you go through so much? You were called names as a child, your family was repressed. How did you manage not to get embittered? His response was, who is to blame now? It happened to everyone. Look what they did to Sakyan Seifullin. I think he was transforming all negative emotions into his art, his creativity. He was absolutely happy. This can be seen in his life-affirming works. В начале 70-х годов Абдрашид Садыханов одновременно работает на киностудии «Казахфильм» и параллельно пишет свои творческие композиции. In the early 70s, Abdrashid Sidihanov worked at the Kazakh film studio and continued to paint. One of the paintings was created in 1971 and was named Bathing Ship. This is where the technique that characterizes 60s manifests itself. 
An everyday scene takes on a sublime poetic turn. Here the artist tries to avoid all unnecessary details. All the shepherds and workers processing the flock are painted with an amazing perception of the sublime and monumental atmosphere. And here we can see the influence of cinematography on Sudihanov's work, a very precise solution with a capacious, multifaceted development of the plot. Using simple colors, he created an unusual and fulfilling reading of a scene from an ordinary life. Полотно доения красной верблюдицы создано в начале 80-х годов. Интересно, что этот период для Садыханова становится неким переходным. The milking a red camel painting was created in the early 80s. For Sidihanov, this period becomes transitional from more figurative, straightforward plot lines in his works, he moves towards metaphorical scenes filled with allegory, hidden symbolism. Interestingly, most often he relies on specific scenes he saw in everyday life. The step of Kazilorda, for instance. Open step space, small hearts, a female figure in the center. The main semantic and compositional center here is the image of a strikingly large female camel. The image of a red camel is amazing by itself. That is a shift away from some obvious concrete concepts towards speculative, semantic and metaphorical ones. This is the center of attention of the artist. After this period, he will dive into the language of abstract symbolic painting. But here, the painting techniques are constructed so that the canvas appears incredibly monumental, both in its form and content. And that makes it attractive, this hard-to-explain metaphysics. В июне 1989 года в Государственном музее искусств имени Аблахана Костеева состоялась выставка Абдрашита Сидиханова. В июне 1989 экспозиция Абдрашита Сидиханова, которая a part of tribal science to fill the abstract or semi-abstract compositions. This was completely new. And Abdrashid Sidihanov was the pioneer. He was interested in esoterica, the teachings of Blavatskaya, the books of Osho. He came across the book by Tinishpaev, a study of the tribal Tamba science. It changed Sadehanov's view of the world. He begins to research these signs, to include them in his artwork. Realizing that this is a kind of sacred spirit that accompanied the nomads for millennia, protected them like Arachs, the spirits of ancestors, he begins using these symbols in his work. One of his paintings, symbol Buran, illustrates the image of a flock of sheep during a storm, which, thanks to the intervention of the sacred higher powers, was saved from death. Symbol Shepherd or symbol Shalpan, a wide variety of paintings dedicated to higher powers and specific people. Everything takes on a new format. And it is at this moment that Sidihanov will call himself the founder of symbolic painting. В начале 90-х годов знаковая живопись Абдрашита Садыханова обретает все большую индивидуальность, характерную для этого мастера. At the beginning of the 90s, Sudihanov's symbolic painting acquired personal characteristic of its master. In 1992, the artist paints symbol Korkit. 
Korkit is one of the sacred images in nomadic culture. He was considered the most significant shaman, healer, an amazing mediator between the world of people and the divine, higher world. It is Korkit who created a unique instrument, Kobis. Kobis is a stringed musical instrument which also has a sacred meaning. In the amazing sound of this instrument, you can hear the step wind, the rustle of reeds, and even the singing of a female voice. The artist, while painting a character riding a horse, also creates a certain sign stylization, actually making this image a symbol corkit. And notice how the artist works with textures. Painting with oil paint alone is not enough for him. He wants to give texture to his painting. He often introduces a wide variety of materials for creating textures, beads, a powder box mirror that appears in the center of the composition. He covers the entire surface of the painting with a thin layer of millet, achieving an amazing, almost carpet-like surface. Constant experiments introduced collage elements in Sidihanov's painting that became a characteristic technique in the 90s and 2000s. And the symbol Korkit is an example of this. Символ Шолпан – картина, которая воспевает красоту мира. Красоту мира в самых разнообразных ее проявлениях. Конечно же, в центре мы видим… The symbol Шолпан is a painting that glorifies the diverse manifestations of the world's beauty. In the center we see a female, the most important archetype in many cultures. And Kazakhstan is no exception. Woman is a symbol of moonlight beauty that catches the eye. At the same time, the drawing is simple, without any complicated intentions and expressiveness, while the whole composition is united by a delicate color scheme. A very gentle flow of white and blue, this is the central female image, her face is a focal point. What is Venus? It is a guiding star. Chopin Venus is a star showing the way. Everything is important for the artist here a general harmony of colors, harmony of the depicted artistic image, textured surfaces. Millet is painted over to create a carpet surface of amazing beauty. The result is an elegant, thin, sublime canvas. It became a transition to one of the most important, in terms of creative maturity, stages in the life of an artist. В плане творческой зрелости этапов в жизни художника. Analyzing Abrashit Sudehanov's painting The Empty Boat in context of the world art culture. I personally have strong association with the late period of Kazimir Malevich's work, the transition from sublimatism to white on white. Abdrashid Sidehanov strives to achieve the same purity of perception, purity of shade and subtle color transitions. By the way, his daughter Zauresh Sidehanova pointed out that this work was created in one day. It was a colossal amount of work an incredibly emotional and creative outburst when the artist needed to achieve this amazing purity and harmony. The empty boat symbol itself is very autobiographical. He aspired to become that very empty boat that floats in the endless ocean of life, striving to achieve universal harmony. I would call this painting meditation, surprisingly subtle yet complex, very philosophical. This is the state that he strove to achieve in his mind, in his soul and his work. All this was embodied in this amazing painting. 
Again, the association suggests itself when he named his exhibition I am a child again. This feeling of purity, freedom, is expressed both in the child's mind and in the perception of an empty boat, which, as it seems to me, can be perceived as the highest point of Avdrashit Sidihanov's later work. <laughs>